Well, everybody's been talking about it and we are getting ready for the solar eclipse. It's happening in just a couple of weeks. Dr. Aaron Pan is here from the Don Harrington Discovery Center. Uh, I think the best guy to talk about uh, the solar eclipse. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, Every, everybody is wanting to know mm -hmm. what this is, how this works. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten some, some things confused. And so tell us, what is the eclipse, first of all? Well, basically, the symbolism is just basically the moon uh, coming in between the sun and the earth and okay. basically forming a, uh, blocking out a portion of the sun disk and causing a big shadow on the earth. So that's the simplest explanation to okay. have. So we, there's a, a, a part, and we're just close to it, where you can really see the total eclipse. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that because I was thinking, oh, it's going to be dark. We're going to see darkness. Explain where Amarillo is and in, in all. Yeah, so there's a, so what's really interesting about this eclipse is that this is the first one that most of the contiguous United States will see basically in 99 years. Uh, so basically, if you wanted to see what that sort of zone of totality where you get complete darkness, uh, basically portions of, basically a line extending from sort of um, Washington and Oregon in the northwest and going all the way to South Carolina in the southeast. Oh. But where we are, we will probably see, if you, were to, if you were to draw zones out, basically from Lubbock to Oklahoma City, you have about 78% coverage to, uh, to 84%. And where we are is right around that 80, 82% coverage. So we'll have a partial eclipse here. That's, that's so you can definitely tell that, that it's happening. I mean, we'll be able to, to tell that on the 21st. Oh, absolutely, you'll definitely see a dark, and you'll see the dark uh, and it'll happen in the basically where we will get our best coverage of the uh, moon covering the, that most of the sun disk will be right around 1256. Okay, so what people getting ready for this, uh, we, we've done some stories, mm -hmm. Dr. Pan, on you've got to have the right eyewear, or uh, I've seen uh, even our own Doppler Dave where he has kind of a welding. Uh, glass that that keeps all the light out what tell me about that part absolutely because because Important. because yes because the, the the rays from the sun are dangerous if you were to look at them with your eyes you cause eye damage and things like sunglasses will not cut it you actually oh. have to have specialized uh, glasses that are made to look at that um, in many cases you've got to look at the ISO number to make sure that it's correct that you can see view it um, in other cases uh, you can also look at it typically indirectly, but you typically would have to do that by making a, a pin view finder, and you can find that kind of information on uh, the NASA website. Now, of course, the Discovery Center, uh, an awesome place to, to get Absolutely. more information. Are y'all doing things now leading up to the eclipse, and, and can we come and visit with y'all about that? Absolutely, so we're, yeah, we're providing information to the public about uh, total eclipses and solar eclipses, and also things like lunar eclipses, because you know it's a great opportunity for people to learn about astronomy and the universe around us, and again, to learn more about the moon and the sun. Uh, we'll also have that day, again, people will be able to invite, invite it out to Discovery Center if they'd like to, and we'll have reduced rates that day. Um, again, we suggest that you have, you know, you need, if you're going to look at the eclipse, you need to, you know, to have or purchase, you know, the proper right um, eyewear for yes. that. So Yes, we don't want folks to get hurt. No. Lots of, of stories like that in the news. So there is a difference because uh, just regular old people like me, doctor, lunar, solar, and total, you, you just, this, mm -hmm. this will be a total, but from where we're from, we'll just see it. We'll see a partial. So okay, there, so okay. there's, so there's many different times, and the the fancy term is um, occultations is what's sort of the fancy term. But basically, okay. when a, one object looks like it's going in front of another object from a from an observer's perspective, which is the fancy term. Uh, so if you have what's called a total eclipse, the entire object covers the sun di sun disk in its entirety, and so you basically block it entirely out you have something called an annular eclipse, and that is where you basically have a big dark spot in the middle of the sun, but you still get see portions of the sun as well as the corona. When okay. you get something like a partial eclipse like we have, you will actually see a fair amount of the sun just covered, but you will see a portion of the sun as well. And then something, uh, then you also have things that are fancy terms like transits, which are basically objects going in front of um, other objects, so a transit of, say, Mercury, whereas where you'd see sort of this little small black dot going across the sun, oh. and that would basically be, it's too okay. far away to cover the entire sun disk so you don't have an eclipse, but it's called a transit. So many people interested in this. So many people are gonna be watching and wanting to know uh, more information. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think is 
something crazy is everywhere I go, I'm seeing shirts and glasses and it, you can't really look through binoculars, telescopes, anything like that you, to, to, that's not safe. No, you can't. You have to have special, you have specialized equipment, special lenses, things like that. Again, the, the sun, even as far away as it is, is very powerful and, you know, your eyes are very delicate and sensitive and so you have to have the proper type of eye. Very eye. real. Yes. Not just exaggerating. No. Very real. Very, got to keep it safe. Absolutely. Um, I know that News Channel 10, we are very excited uh, to come out to the Discovery Center that day. Uh, our weather team and, of course, uh, news team uh, wanting to cover this. Why, why are scientists so excited about this? Because you and I were talking, mm -hmm. it's a big chance for them to Exactly, because what's really great is that, again, the sun, because it's this omnipresent object in the sky that, you know, you know, provides energy for life and things like that, it is so bright that it often makes it hard for us to do other types of scientific observations. And so this gives us opportunities. Uh, for example, you can use specialized equipment to look at the corona, which is sort of the atmosphere of the sun, but this gives an opportunity to sort of study it with visible light, which is a fantastic thing. The other interesting thing is that, you know, people don't think about it sometimes, but what happens when you block out a large portion of the sun, you start getting unusual animal behaviors because you, they start thinking that it's towards dusk and towards oh. the night. So you start seeing that type of thing as well. Um, but in the past, I mean, it's been amazing what kind of observations have been done in, ter in terms of proving the general theory of relativity of Einstein, as well as the discovery of things like helium. Okay. Very, very on. interesting. This is going to be a very special day. Uh, I'm so glad that you took the time with us. Uh, our weather department, every day, Samantha and I uh, getting ready, there's something that comes up about the eclipse. You know here in Texas mm -hmm. uh, that people say eclipse, and I, I said that to you, mm -hmm. and, and but it's eclipse. It's eclipse, yes. But it's so easy for us here in Texas to... I think as long as somebody's <laughs> interested in it, then I, there's no problem with whatever pronunciation they use. All right, and, and again, give us the time, uh, a good time to be able to see it. Yeah, so basically it'll start around 1129, and I think the best coverage will probably be 12, around between 1245 and one o'clock. It'll be about, I think okay. 1256 is sort of what they're saying, but you know, basically from uh, that port, you know, basically from 1230 on, I mean, yeah, from 1230 onwards, it'd be good okay. to be out there. Okay. So. I'm so glad you came today. Thanks for helping uh, explain that, and, and everyone wants to be a part of it. So thanks for uh, helping us with that. You're we welcome. appreciate you. Gr great help from the uh, Don Harrington Discovery Center. Dr. Pan, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dr. Aaron Pan from the Don Herring Discovery Center. I'd like to talk to you today about the amazing event that is going to occur on August 21st, 2017. This will be the first eclipse seen by most of the United States since 1918. From the Pacific Northwest all the way to South Carolina, we'll see a total eclipse. Here in the Texas Panhandle, we will have a partial eclipse where you will see about 82% of the sun's disk covered. I'd like to introduce you to a number of definitions that are pertinent to uh, solar eclipses. Uh, these include umbra, which is the fully shaded inner area of a shadow cast by the moon during a total eclipse. Again, you'll only see the umbra in that area where you have totality, where you'll see it, the full total eclipse. Uh, what we will see here in the Texas Panhandle will be what's known as the penumbra. That's a shadow cast by the moon over an area experiencing a partial eclipse. All eclipses are special cases of a term called occultation, which is when one object passes in front of another object uh, from the perspective of an observer. And the object that passes in front of that other object appears to be the same size or larger. Transit is a little bit different, and that's when one object passes in front of another object from the perspective of an observer, and that object that passes in front of the other object appears to be smaller. I'm here with Doppler Dave, and we're going to explain how a uh, solar eclipse works. And it's very simple. It's basically when the new moon moves in the path between the sun and the earth. So a new moon is when uh, the moon is on the same side as the sun. Absolutely. Because when it's around on the opposite, that's when we get a full moon. Exactly, and it's fully illuminated and you can see. You see the whole disk, but when it comes around to the same side, we usually don't see the moon. Exactly, yeah. and so that's what causes that shadow, that, that umbra during total, in the area of totality okay. and a penumbra 
Now, together. since we have a new moon every month, though, why don't we have a, a solar eclipse every month? We have all of these uh, objects basically spinning around each other and orbiting, and they don't orbit nicely. They kind of wobble. They're in different orientations and different angles. So so sometimes the moon is down a little bit, sometimes it's up, and it's rare to get that exact alignment to project a, a shadow into the Earth. Exactly, and in fact, it's typically five degrees off of the elliptic of tilt of the Earth. We also hear about lunar eclipses, though. That is on the other perspective where the Earth is blocking the direct sunlight to the So this would be more like a, a full moon, but when it crosses in, we have that same alignment. Now it's the Earth that's casting a shadow over to the moon and covering it up. Exactly, but instead of having a darkened, blackened moon, you actually get sort of what is sort of called a blood moon. It's sort of red, and that's because you actually have scattering of blue light rays, and so all you're getting back are you're seeing are these red uh, light waves. What kind of copper colors? Exactly. So Around 4.5 billion years ago, you had a, lot, a large number of planetary bodies forming around the Sun. And these included things like proto-Mercury, proto-Venus, proto-Earth. But you also had some things that sort of had these irregular orbits. It is hypothesized that a Mars-sized protoplanet cleaved and hit the Earth around 4.5 billion years ago and took off a portion of the Earth's crust and mantle and flung that out into space. Because of the gravitational pull of the Earth, that slowly began to form a ring around the Earth, and that formed into our moon. What's really great and amazing about total eclipses is that we, in our solar system, we're the only rocky planet that actually experiences total eclipses. Now, that doesn't mean that other planets in our solar system don't experience eclipses. Some of them do. And even things like gas giants experience total eclipses. But if you're going to talk about a planet whose geology is made up of rock, we are the only planet that actually gets that. If you take a look at this image right here, which is not to scale, you'll notice a few things. One, Mercury does not have a moon, and so it's been impossible for it to have, uh, to experience a total eclipse because there is no moon to block out the rays from the sun. The same goes for Venus, in which case there are no moons, and so they don't experience a total eclipse. Uh, we have Earth, which we've been talking about, but let's go to Mars for a second. Mars is very interesting in that it does not experience total eclipses even though it has two moons. Deimos and Phobos are very interesting. They're small, rocky, they're actually very regular in shape because they're very small, but because they are so small, they cannot block out the full disk of the sun. So one of the really interesting reasons of why Earth is the only rocky planet that can actually have a total eclipse is because of the size of our moon, which is pretty large in proportion to the planet itself, and also because of how close the moon is to the Earth. If someone were to look at Pluto, Pluto is a very, very small dwarf planet, and Charon is actually quite large in proportion to Pluto, as you can see from this image right here. What's really interesting about Pluto is that every 120 years, Pluto experiences a total eclipse every six days, and that's because of how large Charon is and then how it is tidally locked with it. Again, one of the most important things to experience a total eclipse is to have a large sized satellite or moon that can cover the disk of the sun in proportion to the object that it's covering. Well, again, Earth is the only rocky planet in our solar system that experienced a total eclipse. Our gas giants can actually experience total eclipses as well. And that is also because they have several moons. And so they can actually have some really cool things happen. Jupiter has many, many moons, and particularly its four largest moons are known to cause total eclipses. Right here is an image of Jupiter showing three total eclipses occurring on the northern hemisphere of Jupiter all at the same time. These are caused by Io, Callisto, and Ganymede. Saturn is also known to have total eclipses. If you look at this image right here showing the total eclipse of uh, the southern hemisphere of Saturn by Titan. The skies on August 21st are going to look a lot different than this, and depending on where you are, it could look as dark as night or like a cloudy day. While we're not in the path of totality here in the panhandle, we will still see about 80% of the eclipse, which will result in the skies looking more like twilight than mid-afternoon.
The last coast-to-coast -coast total eclipse was almost 100 years ago, but studying past eclipses have given us a good idea of what we can expect for this upcoming solar eclipse. Along with affecting our skies, it will also affect our weather. Well, under the totality of the eclipse, we could see temperature swings of uh, 5 to even 15 degrees. There have been cases in the past where solar eclipse has actually caused a 15 degree Fahrenheit drop, uh, much like you know sunset itself. Along with it affecting our temperatures, the eclipse will also have an impact on our winds. It'll actually slow our winds down, which is a similar effect that we usually see at night. As far as the impacts of the eclipse down this way in the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles, they won't be too much noticeable. Maybe a degree or two simply because we'll only experience a 50 to 75 percent uh, eclipse, given how far south we are from the totality. When heading out to look at the eclipse, don't forget to wear your safety glasses. For News Channel 10, I'm meteorologist Samantha Thomas. Well, we're joined here with Mandy from the Discovery Center, and she's going to help show us a way that we could view the eclipse if you don't have eclipse glasses without hurting your eyes, because that's the main thing when it comes to eclipses. You can't look right at it. So what do you Correct. have here for us? Okay, so there's actually two different ways you can do this. There's a more complicated version that I actually pre-made just to kind of show you today. So basically, all you need is a box. If you've got a cardboard box at home or something easy, and then all you have to do is you're going to poke a tiny little hole in one end, and then on the bottom, you're going to want to cut out a little slit, because that's what you're going to look in. And then when you go outside during the solar eclipse, you're just going to hold this up, let the sun shine through that little bitty hole, and then you're going to look in the little viewer underneath, and on the other end is where you're going to see the solar eclipse. And the cool thing about this one is you can make it as long as you want. The longer you make it, the bigger the eclipse is going to get, which is kind of cool. So this is the more complicated version. Now I'm going to have you help me make a really simplified version. All right, this will be perfect. So, so again, if you don't have your eclipse glasses, you can just make one of these. So exactly. it's so fun to make one. Just yeah, to it's just fun to, you know, make one at home. Mm -hmm. And you can even, like, if you want to decorate and color it, you know, that makes it even <laughs> cooler. So, so what we're going to do is you're just going to fold it in half. And then, and this is cardstock, by the way. You're going to want a little thicker paper. You can do it with regular paper, but cardstock is, is nice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a little square out of the middle here. And I'll cut one, and then I'll let you cut yours. So we need somewhere to put our aluminum foil because the aluminum foil is what we're going to actually poke our little hole with. So if you want to cut a square, so we've got a nice little square out of the middle. It doesn't matter what size the square is, just, you know, decent size. And now what I'm going to do is get some aluminum foil. Perfect. See, you're a pro. All right. So then all you got to do is cover up your square with some aluminum foil. And why is it important that we make these and don't look right at the sun? All right, so yeah, so that's a great question. Um, even though the solar eclipse is going to be really, really cool, you don't want to look at the sun just because that's going to hurt your eyes. I mean, just like on a regular day, if you go outside and look up at the sun, do not do that. I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to hurt your eyes. And so, uh, and normally people don't do that, but for whatever reason during the solar eclipse, it's very tempting, you know, <laughs> to uh, stare up there and watch. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't want you to do that. We definitely want you to be safe and have an alternative way to look at the sun, um, which you can go buy glasses if you want to go get the solar eclipse glasses. Make sure they're the right ones, they're certified, and you can use those. But this is just kind of a fun craft. You know, you can do it with your family, um, get a whole bunch of friends involved, you know. I mean, and it obviously takes no time to make this. I mean, we made this here I know. in just a couple minutes and... Yeah, done. And so the only other thing you've got to do is you're going to need a paper clip. So what you want to do is kind of poke the smallest hole you can into your aluminum foil. And so you just poke a nice little hole down in the small, teeny, teeny tiny little hole. Uh, and then what you'll do when the solar eclipse happens, you'll go outside and you're just going to hold this one out. Okay. The sun is going to shine through that little pinhole and it's actually going to, the solar eclipse will end up on the ground. So go grab something white, piece of paper or something just to put on the ground because it'll be easier to see it. But then you just hold this up and you just watch the whole thing happen below instead of having to stare at the sun. That is really cool. Yeah, the other neat thing about these two is you can actually poke a bunch of holes and if you do that, then you'll see the solar eclipse from different angles and so you'll have more than one down on the ground too. 
Oh, neat. Okay. That cool. is really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, this is obviously super, super simple to do. That one's a little bit more complicated, but right. I'm sure even that, if you have a box or you make a box, it still won't take that much time. I mean, if it means hurting your eyes or <laughs> looking at it safely, I think that it's Right. Worth the time. Exactly. Definitely take the time, make something simple, and hopefully you've got materials like this at home that you could just, you know, grab out of the kitchen and whatnot. And now, I don't know if this cool. will work, but if you had thinner paper, could you maybe stack the paper? Is that something that would You work? really could. Yeah. yeah, you could stack the paper. And really, too, uh, aluminum foil is just more of a safe method so you don't have to use like a push pen or something sharper to make your hole so you could really even just get a regular piece of paper just thick stack it so you don't want the sun going through it you mm -hmm. know but stack it together and then just poke you a nice little hole yeah great well this is super easy so definitely a fun activity that you can do um, to safely view the eclipse and that's coming up before we know it so right. definitely gonna be a lot of fun awesome mm -hmm. thank you well we're about to cover the big 2017 eclipse um, in your lifetime, what has been your experience with solar eclipses? Well, I saw one a couple years ago. Um, I was driving out in the country and it was a partial one and I just kind of briefly saw it passing through. I've never had any experience uh, that I can remember. Um, if maybe one happened when I was younger, I didn't have a, an experience, but I've never seen one before. I've never seen one, ever. <laughs> but I'm excited to see it on Monday. Hopefully I'll get to. It should really come as no big surprise that very few people have ever experienced a total solar eclipse. Historically, such events are rather rare. In fact, the last time that a total eclipse of the sun tracked entirely across the United States was in 1918. This map shows the track that that last total solar eclipse that went all the way across the country took. It's actually a pretty similar path to the one we're about to see. This one was just a little bit closer to our area, but that was almost 100 years ago. This map shows other eclipses that we've had across the country. This was a total solar eclipse back in 1979, but only briefly and for a few states up there in the northwest. Uh, the yellow tracks here, those are partial solar eclipses. Of course, those occur a little more frequently. Now, sometimes the moon's orbit takes it a little further away from the Earth, so it appears a little smaller in the sky. Now, when that happens during an eclipse, the moon might not be quite large enough to cover the entire surface of the sun. That can leave kind of a ring of light around the outer edge. That's called an annular eclipse. And we experienced a uh, pretty nice partial annular eclipse in our skies back in 2012. Well, in case you're looking ahead to the future, there will be more total solar eclipses that affect our area. Uh, this track right here, this is in 2024. Now, this total solar eclipse will track across a good part of Texas and be a little closer to our area. But by far, I think the most spectacular eclipse that we can look forward to, it's way out there, but in the year 2045, we have a total solar eclipse that will come right across parts of the High Plains. Now, I may or may not be around for that one, but we will have the best total eclipse viewing in the whole world in our area in 2045. Reporting on the total solar eclipse in 2017, I'm Doppler Dave for News Channel 10. This upcoming total solar eclipse could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. And once you understand the scientific significance of it, it makes it that much more enjoyable. Total solar eclipses have led to many modern scientific breakthroughs, such as the discovery of the corona. The corona, the atmosphere of the sun, you get a really good view through visible light during total eclipses only. You can do it with instruments the rest of the time, but it's a really good opportunity to study the corona at that point. The corona is the outermost layer of the sun. The reason why the corona can best be studied during the eclipse is because the moon blocks out a lot of the UV rays and other forms of light that can damage instruments. Proving of Einstein's general theory of relativity uh, in uh, the 29th of May in 1919, and they actually were able to prove uh, Einstein's theory by observing the way light bends around the sun. Einstein's theory of relativity is possibly the most important discovery for modern day physicists. It revolutionized the way scientists observe the world around them and gave key insights on the way energy, matter, and gravity behave. The element helium, you know, it's the second most abundant yeah. element in the, in the universe, and so you would think that would be easy to, to find, but it wasn't. Um, and so that was actually done in 1868. It was discovered because of a total solar eclipse. So remember, when you are enjoying the eclipse, you might just learn something. First alert, meteorologist Cameron Venable. 
so excited for the solar eclipse and our very good friends out at the Don Harrington Discovery Center are here to talk about some of the events that day and other things that you and your family can enjoy at the Don Harrington Discovery Center. Jennifer is here with me, Jennifer Noble and Shanna Collins. So Thank good for y'all to come today. Thank you. Yes. Very exciting. Uh, about the solar eclipse. Yes. Do y'all feel that way? Yeah. Oh, yes. Definitely <laughs> looking forward to it. There's a lot Thank of buzz you. happening. There is. Now, I want to talk about that day. Uh, News Channel 10, we're going to be out live. Our meteorologist, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, myself, our noon show is going to be happening. I want to talk a little bit about what's happening that day. I know that the schools are involved and we can see things on YouTube. Right, Jennifer? Yes. We're going to be doing um, an interview. Uh, we're going to be collaborating with Dr. Pan. He's going to do a lecture that we can send a link to all of the schools in our district, and that way they can be a little informed on what happens with the solar eclipse. It's all very exciting. Now, is that something that will be uh, live as the eclipse is happening that day? No, it's okay. something we're going to pre-record, and then okay. we'll, we'll send them out so that way they can go and... and experience the solar eclipse without having to be attached to the Gotcha, video. okay, that is perfect. That makes a, a lot of, <laughs> of sense. So what is it about uh, science and math and special things that happen? Uh, this is the place to be in the panhandle, I feel like, don't you, Jennifer? Oh yes, the Discovery Center, it's definitely my favorite place, but I'm biased, I work there, so. <laughs> um, I, uh, over the past year, in fact, we've had um, over six, 65,000 participants in just our education program alone have come to the Discovery Center, and that's over half of the people that walk through our doors. So we're huge in education. We love bringing people in and yes. teaching them about science and having them involved with our things. So That makes it uh, so great for kids, and that's yes. who we really uh, want to teach math and science to, <laughs> don't you think? Absolutely. Um, tell us the day, uh, the eclipse. Uh, we're live mm -hmm. at News Channel 10, our noon show, our mm -hmm. meteorologist coming out. This has never happened before. This is very exciting for us. We're very yes. excited. Uh, what's happening that day also, just to let our patrons know? So the day of, we'll start at around 11, 11.30 at the Discovery Center and go until about 2.30. Um, with the eclipse will start around 11.30 and then the, the highest point um, that we will witness here in Amarillo um, is going to be right around um, 1 o'clock. So for the noon hour, I mean, we want everybody to come out, enjoy your lunch. We'll have um, a food truck on site, grab a picnic beforehand, just come kind of enjoy the eclipse. We have glasses on hand. So if wow. you haven't gotten your glasses yet, we have a very limited amount okay. left. Good to know. Um, Good but to we, know. I mean, the main thing is safety. We want everybody to be so safe when you're looking at the sun. It's still, it's still not safe. So we recommend only looking for maybe 30 seconds at the sun, even with the glasses. Okay. We're also making pinhole viewers on site. Yes. And, and okay. Those are going to be fun too. An even safer way. So yes. you don't, you're not looking directly at the sun. So that's probably the best bet for the smaller children to look at the, I mean, it projects it onto the ground. Right. Um, and we'll make them that day we'll have a special showing of Secrets of the Sun in our space theater. I love um, that space That'll happen space at theater. 3 o'clock so you okay. won't miss any of the eclipse. That is after the eclipse and you okay. can kind of come learn a little bit more about the sun and the, the nice. earth. Nice. That is so cool. What, what a, a great way really because those chairs are comfortable. It's cool in there and you get to see it you know on it's our full all around the room. Planetarium. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, tell me some things uh, for folks if you miss this big event. I know that y'all always have programs and, and fun events. Uh, yes. I like breakfast always. with Santa. Yes. Um, there's uh, Mind Fest. There's, there's mm -hmm. things that we do We just all actually year. finished Mind Fest. So we um, have three major fundraising events. We are a nonprofit science center. So we have okay. three fundraising events. We have Bureaulogy in February. We have an after dark event in the summer. And then we have Mad Scientist Ball in October. That's coming up October 14th. Okay. Um, and that's actually our biggest fundraiser. So we have a band and it's catered and we it's a lot of fun. It is fun. Uh, before we go today, I just have to tell you, uh, they have a membership that my family and I have been so lucky to get to go through. Um, 
not expensive. It lasts not a year. Expensive. And tell me some of the benefits uh, if you go out of town. Yes. With this well, membership. so the memberships start at fifty dollars, and the most popular one is our family membership, and that's seventy-five dollars. Um, that will get you and your your children that live in your house into the Discovery Center, just regular admission free every day. Wow. Um, most of our, a lot of our um, programs would be free as well. And then you get discounts on some of our other ticketed events. Um, you also can take this Discovery Center membership with you all over the country. There's several um, museums around the country that you can get free admission. It's okay. a partner program that we're a part of. Um, and you can save, I mean, hundreds of dollars yes. on admission at different museums throughout the country. So it's definitely that. a benefit. Well, and it pays for itself very, very quickly. Absolutely, yes. Uh, what a great deal. We're very excited. What are your hours on the uh, solar eclipse? That's next we Monday. We are open from 9.30 to 4.30 okay. that day. Um, and we also have a special admission price for just $5. So members, of course, are always free. So okay. members are free on Monday. Um, if you are a non-member, you can enjoy a $5 admission price that day. It's All a right. discount. Listen, it's going to be a beautiful day. We're excited. I'm so glad that y'all came. Thank I you. really am a big fan of the Discovery Center and News Channel 10 viewers. We know that they uh, love coming and seeing you. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much. Uh, you're education yes. coordinator? I'm actually um, the outreach educator. Okay. So I get to go and travel around the panhandle and have crazy science fun with all the kids. Nice. So I love it. <laughs> and Shanna, you're in charge of marketing? Uh huh. Marketing okay. and our fundraising events. All right. Ladies, thank you so much. Happy Thanks Eclipse. Thanks for having us. Yay. All right. All right. <laughs>